time for the Wiener Shake Show, Wiener Shakers. To get involved, please call 302 Raw Dumb. Raw Dumb. Raw Dumb. Yeah. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. And now, punch yourself in the balls and call yourself Susan. Because we about to blow the lid off of this bitch. It's the Wiener Shake Show. And now, here's Greg Wiener and Imran Shake. Do you hear that? In the background, it sounds like a, a clicker to train a dog. And okay. Why? I li- I like to click things. I like to be tactile when I'm when I'm uh, thinking. Co-hosting. Co-hosting. This, well, this is a new development. Where did you come up with this? I have a thing. I've always done this. Whenever I go on date, first off, I can't look at you. I gotta close this. Window I can't somehow. see you. Put some fucking tape over this. Okay, got it. Okay. I've always whenever Hold- I've gone out on dates. And I I don't know what it is. I always rip off a little piece of the napkin because usually that's the most accessible thing. Mm-hmm. And I just play with it. I play with it. Nerves. The whole time. I, is it nerves? I guess so. Because I, I don't, you know this, I bite my nail. I'm a nail biter. D- well, and, I, I hope you wouldn't do that on a date. Well, exactly. Right. I mean, it's gotten to the point where I've tried sneaking nail bites on dates. Wow. Which is donkulous. Are the girls, oh, yeah. are the girls oh, yeah. seeing you uh, play with the napkins? They are. I'm pretty sure they are. They have to be. Has, you know, you're because when you're on a date, you're taking in the full the full I mean, you're you're taking big gulps here. You're taking in the full picture, right? So yeah. they have to they have to see me fiddling around with a napkin or a straw sometimes or have but, has anyone called you out on it like hey dude uh you want to fucking focus and put your hands on the table like a normal human being as opposed to a <laughs> manic no, crazy whack I job? I mean, don't, don't ca- mischaracterize it. It's not like I, I'm like bopping around under <laughs> with my hands underneath the table, like fucking going full force. Looks like I'm jacking off. If you look at mogul paintings and stuff. I don't look at mogul paintings. I'm not interested. You declasse swine, which we can get into, I'm sure, later in the educational portion of the podcast. I'd but... rather not, but go ahead. We'll skip that. <laughs> we'll skip that portion. Well, if you're going to skip my content, Greg, then oh, this is that's your... not on me. That's on you. Oh, this I mean, is that's... your prepared content? Finally. Yes. <laughs> and it's all about uh, fucking fasting and bullying and uh, brown people. No, no, just the fasting. Just the fact what what Ramadan is. That was my content. But if you don't want to hear it for your fancy ass podcast because it's not funny enough, well, A, that's Islamophobic. Oh, B, of course. B, that's that's uh, uh, misrepresentative of what this podcast is about. Oh yeah. And <laughs> I'm fucking saying? around with the horror soundboard again. I don't know. I, I, we don't need it. We don't no, need it. No, we need more soundboard. If anything, we need more soundboard. Is that the feedback you've gotten after you finally shared the um, the podcast with people? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what yeah. they've said? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to hear me play the harmonica? Not really. Great. <laughs> that's not you playing. That's you playing? Wow. That's uh, good. Decent. Decent. Decent, huh? I'll blo- I mean, here's the thing. No. That's pretty remarkable that you can do that. I'm, I didn't know you played the harmonica. We call it the uh, the metal harp in the industry or something <laughs> harp. I don't know. Here, I'm going to play uh, an actual song that maybe you'll recognize. Here, okay. we're going to play uh, oh, Name That do, Tune. No, we, can't, we can't play this game. This will break my heart. This will break my heart. Continue. I got it. My neck, my back, my pussy, and my butt. <laughs> right? Did I get it? Bingo. Did I get it? Uh, listen, here's the thing. We can't play this game because Why? remember that girl? Remember that girl who Which I was in love with who rejected me? She's a violinist and oh. a very good one. And one of the things was that I would have her play song like theme songs from TV shows on the violin on the fly and she could do this. Of course she could. Uh, listen, oh, I'm around musicians uh, 24-7 and these people that have been in, in music all their lives can just you say, hey, play this. And this one guy on the piano, he's also the music director, he'll, he'll organize an entire song in five 
five minutes with five different instruments, boom, it sounds like they've been playing for years. It blows my mind. Insanity. It is. I don't know how they do it. Is this, this the chick- girl? Hold on. Is this the girl um, the who you wrote the essay to? Yes. <laughs> and, she. I had her playing the A-team theme on the violin, and she was knocking it out of the park. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, well, good. I still have a list of songs <clears throat> that I wanted her to play that she never played. Oh, how tragic. That's so yeah. sad. Um, by the way, you got the name of the song wrong. Oh, what? Yeah. I did. That's remarkable. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Stand By Me. <laughs> you were way oh, off. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Do another one. Do another one. Another one. I, I don't know any other ones. I literally just started playing it like last week. Wow, last week. Yeah, I'm a bit playing, of a I'm a bit of a genius. Playing a butchered version of Stand By Me already. <laughs> um, That's pretty awesome. Actually, it wasn't really butchered. It was simple. Stand by me. It was unplugged, and it was from my fucking gut. Okay. I can play a very mean jingle bells on the trumpet. Can you? Not to brag. I mean, I could like 40 years ago. God damn it. Yeah, shut that fucking thing off. It's my notifications on my computer. I can't. Otherwise, it's just... otherwise. What? You're going to find a new podcast to be on? Wow. You're nervous? Yeah, I'm nervous. My email notifications make you nervous, huh? No, it's like we're on a date. You understand these, no. I, I want to call it radio hours. These radio hours, <clears throat> yeah. that's what I'm pushing for. Mm-hmm. These radio hours are like an extended date, you and I. How so? Well, it's two people coming together who don't really know each other and maybe shouldn't know each other. <laughs> and they're coming together to create a magical moment in time. It lasts about an hour and a half, two hours. And you don't get laid at the end. That's the key similarity. I can see where you draw the, uh, the, the, uh, where you see the... (laughs) Thanks for saving that bit, by the way. Okay, and by the way, this is part of the reason why I don't want to record at 11 o'clock, which, by the way, you were fucking late again today by an hour. But whoa! Yeah, an hour. We said 11 o'clock. What are you woeing? It's true. It's a fact. I said, give me 30 minutes, no. and I my first message to you was at 11.38 a.m., eight minutes. I was late by eight minutes. No, no. You're uh, interesting. You've taken up lying. That's fascinating. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I have oh, an, see, this, I have, this, Jesus, no. we've got to wait for each other. We've got to start feeling each other better. <laughs> <laughs> Every see, time I go to talk, like you're date. like, see, it's no. almost, what? Sign- what? Uh, uh. Listen. Shit on me by Nicki Minaj. Uh, shit on him. Shit, shit on him. I love that. That's a song. fucking great song. I heard that and I was like, man, this woman's got a big dick. Oof. She's her got ass a... is not real. Yeah, I know. I don't care because I'm not going to have sex with her. So, um, like, I know for a fact I am never going to have sex with Nicki, Nicki Minaj. She must be a tomcat in the bedroom. What is that? I'm sorry. I wasn't born in 1928. Can you it's explain a, what tomcat in the bedroom means? A tomcat, man. It, it's a line from Meet the Fockers. Chambers. No, it means she's fucking wild in bed, man. A tomcat's like a wild no cat. I mean, I've heard Tomcat in the sense that, like, oh, I was out Tomcatting last night. My roommate used to accuse me of that all the time, my old roommate. Yeah, I've heard that, too. What, of Tomcatting? Wow, why would he assume yeah. that? She, she. I've only ever lived with women. I've never lived with a dude. Maybe that's why you think you have lady hips. Because I'm, con- <laughs> I'm constantly you're, exposed to and actual com- lady hips. And, you, you know, when you live with someone, you kind of compare yourself to them subconsciously a little Can bit. Can you notice how much I'm letting you continue on? Yeah, no. I'm it's, not interrupting? It's a market improvement. I really appreciate it. It'll save me a shit ton of time when I'm editing. Because it's we're communicating with each other, like on a date. Jesus. Okay. We're on a date, Greg. Well, I knew this was too good to be true. And you're buying the drinks, I'm afraid. So, no, we're I'm going. We're going Dutch. Away. You know my first. Um, you go Dutch on no, the first date. No, you buy right. You I, have to buy. A girlfriend, a uh, significant other. Uh, when I started dating her, for at least the first eight or nine dates, wouldn't Ooh. even motion when Ooh. the check would come. She, like there was nothing. She would sit there as neutral as you could possibly <laughs> imagine. Actively and neutral. Actively oh. neutral. She wouldn't like go to the bathroom when the check comes or, <laughs> you know, distract me with some kind of, you know, whatever. She, she would crazy. just sit yeah. there and feel entitled to uh, sit there and let me pay for everything. And my, mind you, I would not let a, this girl pay for anything in any of our dates, but please fake it. 
like twitch an arm towards the direction where your purse <laughs> is, okay? And 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 you know, motion like most Jews do when a check comes, and we're like, oh, but we oh. always we always do it a beat later. Oh. We're like, oh, how much is it? Even though you know the person with you is going to most likely pay for it, but yeah, this girl was just like, I was she's like, sitting there like she's silent protesting. Yeah, like she's she, at a sit-in. No, she's saying, go ahead, pay for it. You're the man. I have the vagina. You know, she's like one of those uh, freedom writers at the lunch counter just sitting there quietly what she's sitting there with stoicism and resolve what's a freedom what a freedom what you know back in the civil rights movement when uh, afro-americans would sit at the lunch counters where whites where it was white oh only. yeah 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 okay Okay. I'm trying to bridge. I'm trying to bridge worlds here. Yeah, Jews did the same thing. Jews protested during the civil rights. We sat at the lunch counters. We marched. Really? We marched. We stormed the Pentagon. I mean, we were in the streets. We were shutting really? down traffic, disobeying police orders. I mean, we were refusing to be silent in the face of empire and death. Okay. But that's what but we not, did. But not on Saturdays. No. Well, how could we get anywhere by horse and buggy? You can you can you do you can't do horse and buggy on the Sabbath. You can't do anything. Oh, really? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, all talk. I didn't do shit. I was talking. Oh, during the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. I was talking to a girl recently on a date. Again, how great I am on dates. We started talking about, or I, I we didn't start talking about. I started asking her very while, persistently while you were twisting uh, napkins in your fingers. Right, while I was twirling napkins in my yeah. fingers in full view yeah. that uh, she she explained the various <laughs> levels of Jewish orthodoxy. Oh. I think she was she was so puzzled by my insistence on her explaining this on a first date. She took offense she, to it, didn't she? She like adamantly explained because it was one of those situations when someone asks you a ridiculous like if someone ran up to you on the street, a random person was like, hold this flaming bag of shit. You would hold it because you're so surprised what's going on right. that you're like you can't accept that this is not really happening. So you just do it, you know. No, I, I would never hold a flaming bag of shit from some stranger. Yeah. I would run for the hills. I'd think they were probably a terrorist, and that shit was a bomb. All right, fine. Maybe that's a bad one. If someone if someone ran up to you on the street, yeah, and was like, "Here, hold this." I mean, I can only think of violent scenarios for oh, some reason. I mean, that's a shocker. I was gonna <laughs> say hold this gun, you know, or uh, or hold this bomb. I mean that. That's, that's more a commentary on society today. Why don't than you it say, is. hey, what? can you hold this basket of fruit? That's not violent. That's, that's benign, though. That's not weird. What's the weird Yes, thing it about? is. Why would a stranger run up to you and say, here, hold this bag of bananas, pineapples, grapes, and apples, and strawberries. I'll be right back. I mean, that's, yeah, now, <laughs> that's specific. Yeah, well, so what is this scenario? That. Please continue. By the way. Can yeah. We, can we just say I just want to applaud your efforts to rattle off all those fruits. That wasn't bad. Off the top of your hat. Yeah. That was no, pretty good, I, I mean that. I mean you want to talk about jazz, baby. I, I don't. I, listen, I feel what I say and I say what I feel, and that's what makes that's what separates me from the pack. Can I say I really don't like jazz music? <sighs> Why? I don't know. It's it just seems so corny to me. What? It's it improvisational, like man. And especially when you get a good good group of jazz players together and they're just like, here, follow me, guy on the fucking bass. And he just nails off a fucking, you know, a bunch of licks and everybody jumps in and then all of a sudden it's fucking beautiful. It makes me yawn. But beady bop, boop boop boop. You haven't I'm heard good curious. jazz then. All right, let's get into uh <clears throat> Yeah, you Excuse want to clear me. your throat some more on air? I moved away from the mic, and I fully planned on editing it out. Dick smacker. <laughs> wait, wait. We have to. I can't let that slide. What the hell is a dick smacker? Like, know. you're running around just slapping dongs? That can't be joyful. Smacking. Is smacking is like, you know, the uh, you, you use like lip smack. the palm of your hand, and you, you, you smack somebody across the face from the right to but the left. Doing... But you do but it, you it to a dick. To a yeah, you do it to a dick. That's a dick smacker. I don't know why I have to explain these things to you. Are you into that? I, yeah. I'm not I'm not into violence in bed of any kind. Mm, that's a good subject. Um I had a girl like an X X X X X dig her nails into my back repeatedly. Oh. And like the first time it was like, that's Oh, this hot. is hot, you're dirty. And then <laughs> After the third time, oh, by the way, this was my marathon five times in one day popping session that I Damn. had. But after like the second Damn. time of scratching my back, I was like, ow. <laughs> ow. 
And she's like, I, you don't like that? I'm like, no, it hurts. Like, I'm not coming because of that. I'm coming because your tits are beautiful when I uh, bang you. Uh. Oh, I had a girl smack me in the face hard while we were fucking. We were dr- She was very drunk. She just fucking hauled off and smacked the shit out of me. And I tossed her like she was, she was on top of me. And I flipped her over and I pinned her hands and I'm like... Why did you fucking hit me so hard, god damn it? <laughs> yeah. And and I don't remember her response. Taking a turn. I don't remember yeah, her, her response. response I think I just out I, you were fucking pinning her down. No, I I Greg, pinned her I, Should you be talking about this legally? I don't I don't wanna Yeah, no, this is legal. Um she was fully consenting, please. But so what did she say? Nothing, because uh I started kissing her passionately because it kind of turned me on at the same time. <laughs> I love so. that it was like a fu- it wasn't like a playful or like BDSM. It was like a full slap. No, yeah, it was re- and it was out of nowhere. We were like clicking and we were <laughs> laughing. We were just like lusting, and then all of a sudden, bam! And it was so surprising that I, that's why I flipped her over, and I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" But you went with it yeah, because it course. was so surprising. Well, my papa was in her peepee, so you know, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the great equalizer, isn't it? It's... Anything goes when your pop-up is in someone, another's PP. Yeah. I had, this is the funniest thing that's ever happened to me in the sack, as it were. Great. Um, I was I was with a girl, and, and we were in a, a position, a very nice position. Which the one? Congress. You know, I hate the term doggy style. I hate that term. I really do. I don't like saying it. I, I, I just don't like saying it. <laughs> I don't know what it's called otherwise. I think it's called the Congress of like the Crane or something like that in the Kama Sutra, of which I'm not familiar. The Congress of the Crane. Oh, hey, baby. Hey, baby. Oh, this is good. This is good. But mm. oh, let's do Congress of the Crane. That's way better than doggy style. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Well, you're it's Pakistani, so maybe style. that's the custom. Oh, they, darling. They, huh? Oh, darling, please. When you're done with the curry, I would like to do Congress of the Crane style. You know, I know you're trying to be funny here. But no, that I'm actually not. sounds very sexual. I'm a wreck. Oh, God. That's two. We're now, this is uh, two out of four episodes where you've uh, achieved boner while I'm achieved talking. Achieved erection. Yeah. I, you, my favorite turn of phrase is achieving erection. <laughs> not not I got a boner, not I'm getting wood. <laughs> it's I, I've achieved wood or I have achieved a boner. Darling, like it's, darling, when you're done pouring the tea, I should inform you that I have achieved erection. <laughs> Please come over here and sit atop this. My mountain. Take your mound and thrust it thusly upon my flagpole. <laughs> darling, darling, darling. Darling. When you, heave your, when you heave your bosoms thusly, it makes thusly. me... Thusly. No, you blew it. I'm not... I was sexting with a girl earlier today. Jesus Christ, it's 12.18. <laughs> what time did you wake up at 6 and be like, I want to put my caca in your doo-doo? What what do you do? First off, yeah, I'm not into anal. I just want to make that clear to everyone listening. Have you tried? Oh, good, because we were all on the edge of our seats. <laughs> oh oh, I, have you heard the the Greg Weiner podcast with Imran Shake? I hope Imran finally tells us if he likes it in the butt or not. I hope he addresses that addresses it this. I episode. hope they cover it. They didn't talk about it at the end of the last episode, so hopefully they get to it this week. No, because there was a story in in fifth grade. No, not fi- I'm sorry. This was in high school. A friend of ours came back sophomore year, and we were like, "How was your summer? Oh, I read books. How was your summer? Oh, I went to Disneyland. Oh, how was your summer? I like jerked off all day." One guy was like, "I heard about anal sex," and so we were gl- glued on this guy. Like, educate us, tell yeah, us. Yeah. He was like, "You don't want to do it." You're like, why? He's like, well, a buddy of mine was in a pool with uh, his girlfriend. And we just jizzed right there. The fact that he knew someone who had a girlfriend was erotic enough. But then (laughs) he was like, they were in a pool and they were like, hey, you know, let's let's make it happen. Let's let's do it. So he's sitting in the pool and he's like, let me do it up your butt for logistical reasons. And she was like, all right. Yeah. For logistical reasons. That's a good line. But see, that's how bad I... I mean, that's what I'm talking about. If I was sexting a girl, I would be like, I'm just not good at it because I get so technical about it. Like earlier today when I was sexting this girl, I was like, oh, when we're together, I like to optimize our time and make sure that, you know, my penis is in your mouth. I don't know. That's not really going Did you really say that? I did use the word optimize. Wow. And, And I was like, this, I'm not good at this. 
I'm not good at this. So for logistical reasons, they decided to do anal in the pool. So he's sitting there, <laughs> and she backs up on his wang. Mm-hmm. And they start doing it, and it's great. They're both enjoying it. But then suddenly she shifts a certain way. Oh, no. And it breaks his dick. <gasps> oh, my God. Like, snap. Like, take, like. Oh, oh like, God. Like, just. Mm. And and mm. so we were just like, oh, I, I'm never going to have anal sex ever. Never. So that's that. what you, you relate to anal sex is dick breaking in half. Yeah. Never going to do it. Never. How old was this never. kid that his dick broke? I mean, he must have been. What? How old are you in sophomore year of high school? Fifteen or yeah. twenty. In in the case of uh, some people in my co- high school. Hey, dude. Oh, you have a kid with you. You have your kid with you in uh, in in tenth grade geography. Okay, Jesus. We didn't have that in my high school. We no. were blue bloods. Yeah. No. So I. So this girl. We were. We were. We were doing it. Uh. Uh. Canine style. By the way, when dogs actually do it, I, I was going to get to this, but you rudely interrupted me. Mm. When dogs are doing it, so they do it, they mount each other the way we know doggy style to be. Right. But then when they're climaxing, mm-hmm. they go butt to butt. What? So they start out mount, having mounted each other or, or the, the male mounts the female, right? But then when he's about to climax, he like gets off of her, still pee pee in, uh, still uh, uh, pop pop in pee pee and turns around and they're butt to butt. And that's how he climaxes. So her. the dog's dick bends backwards logistically yeah. and yeah. pops off. Still yeah. inside of the the other dog the whole time the whole time man whole I got a time. ton of respect for dogs even more so now penetration is maintained throughout the whole procedure have you tried doing that what is have I don't feel like this is real I think that that's real look me. it up no one no one no one knows about this because who wants to talk about dog sex <laughs> well you do that. obviously <laughs> I'm I'm biting at the chomp okay all right hold so, on so how does a I'm going into Google a dog climb Max. While you research that, I'll finish my story. The funniest thing that ever happened to me in bed. So me and this girl were going at it like a couple of dogs. See, that's so derogatory. That's to so dogs. Like, yeah, it is. Like a couple of dogs. So she, like, we're in the moment. and It's very heated. It's very passionate. It's very nice. It's very sexual, obviously. We're both having a great time. Mm-hmm. I'm, she, I'm sure. She, and I'm, I'm very, I'm a pansy in bed. I'm a very, I'm, I'm very sensual. I'm very, but I'm not a lick of aggression. There's not, I'm, I'm the softest person ever. There's no aggression in me whatsoever. You're a legends and, in the fall kind of uh, guy. <laughs> You look him in the eye, or you do the slow <laughs> groove. No spanking, God forbid. No, I'm not. I, I mean, I, I will oblige if asked to do it, and I, I have. It's purely for their enjoyment. So you don't, you don't do the old faux strangling thing. No, no, hmm. no. I got accused of that. I like putting my hand there, but one, one time, one chick, one chica was like, "Are you trying to strangle me?" And I was like, "No, no, 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 no I'm not. No, I'm not into that. I'm not into that." No touching. No touching. I did the full arrest of development thing. I put my hands up. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. All while maintaining intercourse, by the way. Anyway, so oh. then we're going at it, and we're both having a great time. It's very passionate. You know, there's there's uh, sensual uh, noises being made. and, mm-hmm. and By she, you, probably. <laughs> by me and by her. <laughs> mostly me. And God. She, she's mostly like, what the fuck is going on back there? And she like, she very matter-of-factly, I don't know, this may not be funny to anybody, but to me it's the funniest thing ever. She very matter-of-factly turns to me and goes, can you pull my hair? Thanks. Oh. And, it was, and it was just Jeez. like, it was just, it just went from passion, 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 passion. Can you pull my hair? Thanks. Passion, passion, passion. It was just, I don't know. I Maybe it's not that funny. but I, I think you had to be there. It was total. It was a total you had to be there. It was thing. a total you had to be there. I can't find pictures of dogs fucking. Uh, you know, <laughs> a- anywhere else, you'd think the internet would provide this content, but maybe Google doesn't support this search. Maybe I've got a filter on or something. How do dogs mate? Okay, Ooh, what is this? Uh, not stuck in other canine re- reproduction trick. No. Yeah. This is great. This is riveting radio, by the way. Two well, people researching on the internet. Oh, boom! Go, type in how do dogs mate. The first picture shows it. Oh, wow. All right. How... During copulation and only after the male's penis is fully inside the female's vagina, the bulbous glandus Ugh. becomes engorged with blood. In coyotes, when the female's vagina subsequently contracts, the penis becomes locked 
inside the meme, uh, the female. After mating, the male usually licks his penis and prepos. I'm looking at pictures of a do- two dogs ass to ass. That's wow. how they mate, my friend. That's how they mate. Wow, wow, wow. You learned something. You are an educator, Imran. You I'm really are. First Holy shit. Foremost. Holy shit. All right, listen. We'll take a break, and we'll come back, and we'll get to a bunch of shit. Yeah, I got tons of content. Yeah, yeah, apparently. This podcast is supported by Zcast. Zcast.co is their web address. They are an app and website. They provide the platform that you're hearing this podcast on. They provide RSS feeds, server space, and links for sharing your podcast. We'd like to thank the folks over at Zcast for their incredible platform and for their constant and undying support. We love you, Zcast. Thank you so much for your hard work, and we look forward to forging a beautiful, professional, profitable, and maybe sexual, but not harassing sexual relationship with you. Thank you, Zcast. And now... Back to Greg Wiener and Imran Shake, the Wiener Shake Show. That's a puss, man, in pocket, Greg. Pull up a chair. You know, we should really get into uh, uh, anal, anal sex. <laughs> it's not what I was gonna say. Mm. Okay, my first anal experience. <laughs> girlfriend in college. My first like serious uh, girlfriend in college. What was her name? Uh, uh, Joan. We'll say Joan. Yeah, Joan. Yeah. Just think of Joan from Mad Men, you know. Jo- oh, really? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no, oh. I, no, Christina Hendricks, yeah. You know, I used to date Christina Hendricks, and I'm, now I'm going to tell a story of when we had anal sex. Are you kidding? Wait, was it a Christina Hendricks type, though? I mean, why did you pick Joan of, all, of, of Mad Men fame, of, of all people? Was she a redhead? Was she uh, voluptuous? Was she... Uh, all right, I can't uh, tell the story. <laughs> I mean, I... She's got a weird cleft chin thing going on, though. Oh, well, I does guess she? Cute. Well, you are really tough, man. It's going to be hard for you to find a wife and you have all these... Uh... You know what's the cutest thing a girl can have? Hmm. It's tricky to explain, uh, especially with words. An engorged clitoris. You find yeah. that adorable. It's so cute. <laughs> uh, a clitoris is nothing but a, a, a an undeveloped penis, by the way. So all these guys out here who are like, penises are gross. Uh, I'm not gay. You're a little gay, bro. You're a little gay. Um, that's not true, cutest, but go ahead. That's uh, It's physics, Greg. Mm, well, no, the that clitoris, would be science genius, and you're wrong. So The cl- clitoris is an undeveloped penis. Listen, I proved myself with the dog bit, unless it was cut. No, I'm that, pretty sure I know kidding? what I'm talking about when it comes to human and animal anatomy. Dog, male dog climaxing is definitely going to make the cut. That's podcast <laughs> gold. Are you kidding? Anyway, the cutest thing on a girl is a little bit of, between the chin and the neck, a little bit of chubbiness. A little bit of, just a, just a slight curvature. Hmm. Just a little, just the slightest bit of it. What? I'm not talking about a turkey neck. I'm not talking about a no neck. There has to be a neck and chin, but just a little curve. God, that was just fucking little curve. painful. Please don't ever do that again. So anyway, you were telling me you were your first serious girlfriend in collage. This woman who I'm going to assume for the rest of this story is as voluptuous as Christina Hendricks. Continue. Sure. In in my fantasy world, sure. No, actually. The only way I'm going to be able to climax during this story, so. Oh, God. You, it's good that I stay so flaccid whenever you get disgusting and talk dirty. Because I know again that I am a straight man. Not that no, I no, no. Not you that... enjoy the clit. Do, oh, do you right. or do you not like clitorises? Yeah, I like. You're a every... little gay. You're I a like... little gay. I love everything on the female body. Okay, all right. All lives matter. Just answer the question. All right. You like the clitoris? Yes or no? Did you say all wives matter. I said all lives matter. All lives matter. <laughs> Okay. I asked you if you like the clitoris, and yes. you're like, I like all parts of the body. All right. Yeah, no, <laughs> of course. I mean, if you don't like, like the clitoris, then you're not making a lady climax, and then uh, shit ain't working out, bud. So you like penis, micro penis at that. I love tiny little baby penises. <laughs> Love them. That's, Can't get enough of them. That's what I wanted to get in the clear. Now, please continue your story about your first time. So we were, and I can't remember because it was a while ago, but, you know, we were in the throes like of lovemaking. 15 years ago. We were in the throes of lovemaking. You're so funny today. 
We were in the throes of love. Can I explain the All Lives Matter comment? I don't know if our listening audience got that. Because when I asked you, do you like the clitoris or not? You said, I like all parts of the body. That's like saying, do you believe in Afro-Americans' rights? And you saying, I believe in everyone's rights. The link I was trying to make there. Well, okay, two things. One, no, that's not a good link. And two, if you have to explain a reference, then the reference really didn't have any kind of gas behind it. It was a pure failure. Go ahead. One, that was a very good link. Mm -hmm. Two, the people who are at the front of the class got it. Three, I can't help it if you're a bigoted racist. (laughs) Now, please continue. Please continue with your story. We were in the throes of lovemaking, and all of a sudden she's like, I put it in my butt. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Oh, that's, that's it. That's the end of the story. No, it's not. It's just getting started, my friend. <laughs> Wait, she said but. She used the word but. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I would have lost it. I would have lost it right then and there. I mean, what is she going to say? Put it in my pooper? Put it in my <laughs> fart pipe? I mean, butt or ass is appropriate. Yes? No. Ass is appropriate. Butt is comical. Uh, put it but in my butt. Com- so I'm like, uh, I'd never done it before. And this was like the first girl that I had like really like adult, wild, crazy in public sex with. Like we were, you know, Whoa. we were in lust. So this in wasn't. Public. Well, not this, you know, occasion. But yeah, we. Where'd you guys do it in public? Golf course at night under a big tree. Wow. After After I hadn't had sex for like three years, by the way. And, oh, you must uh, have popped in like two seconds. Put it in your butt. Okay. I'm assuming we had lube i didn't go in there dry because uh or maybe i did no i didn't anyway it was spur of the moment so the lady didn't have time to prepare so i'm like i go in you know i'm i'm in in the exit hole and all of a sudden i I, well i'm smelling dupe okay no no no, yeah oh no absolutely i mean this happens it's (laughs) human nature again it's physics and she uh, I don't remember if I finished. I think as soon as I caught a hint of um, shit, I was like, ah! I was like, oh, I got turned off, you know, because nothing. As you do, good <laughs> as you do. Yeah. So I found out one, I'm not into scat, and uh, two, someone needs to prepare a little bit. So I, I withdraw my. Uh, my rifle, Gee, yeah. <laughs> my baby, ri- my baby making rifle, not my baby rifle. <laughs> you just revealed something about yourself as well. Yeah. No, not a fact at all. So I, I, I yank my rifle. I yank my uh, love rocket Were you, out of her. Was your was your rifle camouflaged? If you was it catch sheathed? My was it sheathed? Is it sheathed? No. Wow. Well, oh. what am I worried about? Wow. You know, this is a long term girlfriend, so I don't know. All right. All right. Fair I'm enough. like, well, fair if I'm going to do it, why am I going to wear a coat? You know, I want to go out into yep. the rain and feel the rain on my face. You know, your uh, teardrop titties. <sighs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go. All right. It's see, been a hard, see you later. Man. Hard... Have a good one. <laughs> so Can anyway. you harmonica your way out. Can <laughs> you know. that be your exit? <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the Greg Wiener Podcast, starring Imran Sheikh. Well, folks, we finally uh, achieved our goal. Uh, Greg Wiener has been fired from the Greg Wiener Podcast. I, Imran Sheikh, am now the host. I'm back. So I pull out of her and she's like, I I, I have to go to the bathroom. (laughs) And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first and last time I put it in that girl's butt. Parts about that story are her lines. <laughs> I know. I I put it in my butt. <laughs> I I have to go to the bathroom. I I have to uh, go. To the bathroom. Yeah. One time I I uh, I was having sex with a I was having sex with a girl and it slipped and went in her butt by accident. You ever have that Whoa. happen? Yeah. Well, oh. it was slippery down there, and the two holes are pretty close together. And uh, you know, boom. <laughs> And, I, and all I, for yeah, everyone. all I hear is "ow, ow, ow," and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my dick's big." <laughs> it's like, "No, wrong hole," and I'm like, "Oh, fuck!" <laughs> Luckily, I didn't break my dick. I just slowly yeah, pulled it out. Um, this, this, the name of this podcast will be "Mom, Please Don't Listen to This." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Mom, uh, please don't listen to this. Coming to a podcast directory near you. No, I think the title should be... <laughs> I I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor girl. Oh. I know. Well, she asked for it. Uh, yeah. Also, yeah. Don't, uh, it wasn't don't my be, plan. Don't be. You got. This is the thing that I wish I could tell women because it's incumbent upon women. Because well, I ahead. do this too. You got to sanitize yourself down there. Well, most women do. Most do. Some don't. She wasn't unsanitized. She just, you know, she had a she had a a, a bomb in the chamber that she hadn't let go. <laughs> Let's take care of some business. This podcast is brought to you by the fine folks at Zcast. Zcast, a free mobile app and website available in iTunes and Google Play stores. Zcast provides the platform to host and live broadcast your podcast. Thank you, Zcast. This is an important announcement. Please stop multitasking and focus. We desperately need you to rate, review, and subscribe. To rate, review, and subscribe. To rate, review, and sub. We now return to the Great Wiener Podcast with Imran Sheikh. Are, are you ready? I, I mean, I, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> That we got to coin that. that that's going to be code for uh, something eventually as we continue I, to uh, create a scintillating content for 12 year old boys. For 12 year old boys to giggle at while they're trying to pay attention to their algebra teacher. You'll never use algebra in your life. That's true, but it kid. will make you pretty fast at doing math, which I, I am mean. a fucking ninja at. Let's discuss your uh, how your social backlog, social network. Let's discuss how your social networking backlog is after. Uh, um, Do you want a couple more days. takes on that, or this is a real caddy? This is a real caddy episode. As if none of the others were caddy. You realize you say that almost every episode. You know, there's a lot of animus in this uh, <laughs> podcast today, and you could say caddy, but you know, uh, you love to I mean, to pull out the rarely used words and impress everyone with your verbiage. I didn't, I didn't know I had a slight lisp. I didn't I didn't realize that. Thank oh. you for bringing that to my attention. When did I do a lisp? Did I do a lisp? You just did. You just, you just did. <laughs> that was when unintentional. You, you you were in, imitating me as some sort of highfalutin snob. <laughs> Where would I get that? Mm hmm. Go ahead, Imran. Listen, all I'm saying is you need to stop. A, you need to stop interrupting me. B, you need to calm down a little bit. Yeah, you're right. Chill, Good as point. the kids like to say. Good point. And C, stop caterwauling. Let's get on with the show. Kids what did don't you say chill. Kids don't say chill anymore. They 100% say chill. Okay. Well, I wanted to ask they you. They vibe and they chill. I wanted to ask you. Vibe should not be a verb. If I hate it when people use it as a verb. I it's wanna... a fucking noun. It's a fucking noun. Oh, no. Wait. Sorry. No, no, no. The other way. The... <laughs> I meant the other way. It's an it's a verb, not a noun. I'm going to leave that in there, and then I'm going to take out when you corrected yourself so you sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the power of editing. Did you make any headway with the backlog of uh, social networking shout outs, you fucking narcissist? Uh, what? You heard yeah, me. Yeah, listen, I, I, uh, listen. Listen, here's the, here's the situation. I've been on hiatus from posting anything meaningful on Facebook. Why? And it's, did you hear did you hear the key word? Meaningful. A couple of cu fucking cat stories here and there. That's the let off the steam, you know what I mean? As far as profesh stuff, I've I've taken a hiatus. Why? I don't know. I think it's I'm a, I'm in a little bit of a funk okay. and that's I get that. I'm in one right now too, unfortunately. I, I yeah, and I think we can both commiserate in our funks and I think mine is more important, quite frankly. Well, um, I think you know what I, I, I'm c currently going through. I'm pretty sure it's you're not going through that. Yeah, but potato, potato, right? Tomato, no. tomato. No. I think it's how we perceive our our funks. Okay. Well, I'm not going to go into why my funk is because it's highly personal and it's tragic and really sad. So to be clear, you actually have a legit funk. Right. So and I was I was being facetious. Previously. Okay. And what's your funk? You uh, you can't stop yanking apart napkins on dates. Is that what's getting <laughs> nagging at your craw lately? My, so you're like, ah, my I'm too nervous. I'm just going to not post anywhere and I'm going to crawl into a hole until I stop fucking tearing napkins at tables with girls why what's wrong with you imran do you think do you think what okay if you were out on a date let's say you're a girl right and mm -hmm. you have ovaries and a uterus and i believe you already have months. you already have titties so let's say you're on a date with a girl just to be clear just to be man. clear no just to be clear i do not have man tits anymore uh again i lost 30 pounds <laughs> 
Go ahead. Right. Great. So you're on a date. You're the woman in this scenario. Not much has to change about you physically in order to conform to a woman's physique. Just I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Get to the scenario for fuck's sake. And you're on a date with a handsome South Asian man. Uh, some would say conventionally and yet still somehow unconventionally handsome. A Jake Gyllenhaal esque. Jake Gyllenhaal esque. Pakistani. Uh, Jude Law. Yeah. Jude Law. Sure. Yeah, he's Pakistan. Yeah, he's from Pakistan. He's you know, and uh, he's witty. He's smart. He's got. It, it looks like he works out, but you know he doesn't because it's very effortless. How good he looks, right? Is very striking. Like that's the first thing you notice when he walks in because you got you got there a little bit early. Well, because af after the lady hit. Uh, no, I wouldn't say a. I don't. No, for for this scenario, there are no lady hips. In fact, you notice that he has the perfect V shape. It's like he's broad shouldered, yeah, and he he's got. You can tell even though he's wearing pants that he's got those those V muscles above the crotch. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -mm. That ladies love. Yeah. You oh yeah, the D'Angelos. I have those since what I are lost D'Angelos. I lost thirty pounds, so I have them again. Right. right I actually, right. you know, I have a pronounced six pack when I lose weight, like at one of those natural six packs. So just thought I'd yeah. say that. Okay, Greg. Um, I know actually. I know a guy, a Chinese guy. They have. He has zero body fat on him. Sorry, we call he them. Is... We call them North Asians. Go ahead. No, that's Russians, you fool. Chinese so we call are them uh, East, East Asians. Asians. We call them East Asians. My my apologies. Chinese is a food, okay? Chinese food. I've heard, I've heard them refer to themselves as Chinese without the the. Hmm. Even even in A, I'm a Chinese. Or I'm... I'm, or I'm, I'm a Chinese. Must have been I've a fucking that. dumb Chinaman. Yeah, he's delivering my food. It was it was a real quick interaction. He uh, said, here's your number four. I am a Chinese. And that was it. I was like, that was unnecessary. Whatever. <laughs> I'm, glad, um, I'm glad I whatever, didn't tip him. Because Pakistanis are uh, notorious for uh, cheap tipping, like Germans and Canadians. Go ahead. I don't even remember what you were talking about. Oh, this date. Tipping. Right. So you're on a date. You're the woman. And you notice that when I walk in, I'm like, I'm like a, so I was like an eight when you saw me on Tinder. But in person, you're like, wow, this guy is a plus two. So he's a 10 right. in real life. She lucked out or I lucked out as the woman. Go you ahead. lucked out. Go ahead. And you're, you're already getting a little wet down there. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And so, and your nips are hard, and they're showing through your shirt because you've got you've got teardrop teardroppers, which tend to show the nips more, or tend to have uh, perky nipples. Nips. Yeah. Perk, yes, yeah. that thank you. Perkier perk, perk nips than say flapjacks or ball and socks or or uh, pillows. So you notice this. And I'm walking in, and you're you're really turned on, immediately turned on, and you're like, "Wow, I'm gonna sleep with this guy." tonight it just seems like it and especially the way i walk in is pretty awesome you like got a saunter very... you got a you got a pimp walk i would let's not be declasse it's more of a hold on hold on what the fuck hold is declasse it's crass it's it's being rude it's it's being saying things in mixed company but that then, should not be said in mixed just company. say crass uh, let's not be declasse see you're saying i have a list again <laughs> i Don't did not do that with the i said let's not be class a Oh, yeah, I did give you a lisp. Well, you know, if the shoe fits. If the shoe fits. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't even know where the origin of this story came from. We were talking I'm about anal. trying to set anal. it up, Greg. It if you takes, stop interrupting it me, takes I can get to the It takes 12 years point. for you to set up a, this. Go ahead. Uh, I hope the payoff is... Uh, are you there? Hello? Hello? I'm here. I'm here. Well, you know, you're building up for a big payoff. It better... I'm not building up for anything, all right? To be clear, I'm not trying to do a bit here. I'm trying to set up a scenario. I'm, I want to learn about you because we're on a date, as as discussed, unless it was cut. This whole section may be cut. Um, okay, go ahead, because <laughs> I did initially right. ask you about your backlog. I'll, I'm getting to that. I'm trying to set this up, if you'd let me. So you're sitting there. You're a woman. <sighs> and you're, you know what it's like to be a woman. The weight of the world. Your 
were almost a second class citizen, you earned less than your male co-workers, you know what it's like to be a woman. You're taking that in and you're thinking about that as you're sitting at the bar. <laughs> Don't you just hate it when directors do that kind of shit? What, they explain it's, to you what you already know? No, not even that. Or it's like if it's a situation where you're shooting a scene or something or you're playing a scene where you're at a bar waiting for someone and they're like, now you're, you're, the weight of the world is on your shoulders right now and you have to think about what it means to be a garbage collector. And, and it's like, no, no, I don't need, I'm at a bar yeah, yeah. getting a drink. Exactly. It has nothing to do. Oh, yeah. Life. No, I mean, I've, I've had some of the world's most horrible direction given to me, and I just have to say, oh, yeah, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Delete, delete, delete out of my fucking brain. Like, have you ever acted before, sir? Do you know that the, the you telling me these things are horrible for an actor to hear if they don't know better? You moron. Go ahead. So I walk in and you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders. You've got a kid. You're a single mom. And you're trying to figure out how am I going to raise this kid in this technologically cold world of ours. The kid's on Snapchat like 12 hours a day. You're trying to connect with him. The dad's not in the picture. Maybe this this Adonis who's walked in, he seems like a good father too, weirdly enough. He seems super hypersexual, but also very paternal. This is and you? That's th in this, yeah. I mean, yeah. How can a girl see you come in and be like, wow, he looks like he'd be a really good dad? My hips, for one thing, because they're very, they're very paternal. They're very manly. They're motherly. They're motherly. No, 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 no. It works in the reverse. If you can look at a girl's hips and go, wow, she could bear some children. The reverse also works for men where you're like, wow, he can pile drive me and take care of kids because he's got he's got the the reverse of what I've got. Right. So this guy walks in and you're like, wow, this guy can be you just get that vibe. You get that vibe. You see his manly hips. You see his swagger, mm. his saunter. Mm -hmm. You see his his chiseled jaw line. He's got enough hair. So, you know, he's virile. You know, he's virile because his his forearms have hair on them. And then you're like, wow, this guy, this guy is it. This guy, this guy is, is a it. bear. You immediately delete all your dating apps as soon as you see me walk in. Mm -hmm. So I get to the bar finally. And you go, <laughs> finally. Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm trying to paint a picture here if that's a problem to you. I don't know if you realize this, but we're a voice, a vocal medium here, not a visual one. So I need to paint a picture with my words. And if you keep it fucking interrupting me, I won't be able to fucking do that. Go ahead. Oh, I'm, hold on. Just one second. I just need to mark down at what time you began this so I can just delete this whole section. Go ahead. This is great. At least I'm learning now when to how to figure <laughs> out so it's less time for me to edit. Go ahead. One hour and five minutes. Okay. See, you think that caddy talk is funny. Our listeners are uh, out there are turning against you. Oh, yeah. Which I mean, is what I want. I want them to turn against you so that once you eventually get fired from this podcast, my eventual coup d'etat will be welcomed and enjoyed and be bloodless, quite frankly. So I get to the bar and the date is going incredibly well. I mean, you're, it's the conversation is the best conversation you've ever had. This guy is wittier. He's elevating you. Mm. He's elevating your game. He's making you smarter than you had been previously. He's awakened something in you physically, mentally, sexually. Spiritually. I mean, your ovaries are legit spiritually. Yeah. Your ovaries are just popping off. Mm. Like you could feel them just your eggs just like they're just popping. But then you notice that he teared off a little bit of cocktail napkin. Just a little bit. Not a big chunk or anything. Like a corner. He took, right. tore off a corner. Right. And while he's been talking to you, he's maintained eye contact with you the whole time. And I stress eye contact. He has not once lasciviously looked at your titties, your teardrop titties with the good nips because of the shape of your titties, your butt, or even your neck. He's maintained eye contact. And not in a creepy way. He's like looked around. He's looked at other things. But he's, he's only looked at your eyes so he's not disengaged in conversation with you but you notice that he's been tearing this little piece of paper and he's been kind of twirling it fiddling fiddling with it what is your reaction to that you've got to be fucking kidding me 
<laughs> you realize that took 10 minutes. I'm sorry if that's what it takes to explain a premise. That's not my fault. That's words could have. It's whose fault? It's words fault. W-O-R-D-S apostrophe. Possessive plural of the word. I know what a possessive word. plural is, you condescending South Asian son of a bitch. See, you're being, very, you're being very declassé again. And I think that's not, that's doing you a disservice. You could have just said, what would you think if you went out on a date with me, say you're a girl with teardrop titties, and everything's great your, about your me. Your teardrop titties. Yeah. Your teardrop. Everything's great about me, except that I'm tearing apart napkins. And then that I would have answered... And that would have been less than 10 seconds. That, You've got to understand that. that we are dealing with a generation that doesn't have the patience for your educated, beautiful, descriptive scenarios. They want to get to the funny, get to the meat, and they want to move on. Okay? Oh. See, Greg, you're ruining our demographic. You're insulting our the demographic that I'm trying to get in here. No, I'm not. You because think- you know why? Because the demographic that we may have had for five minutes turned us the fuck off midway you know through. What? that story you know, you know what turned them the fuck off your fucking notifications that's what turned them the fuck off i don't know how to turn that off on my mac i'm sorry <laughs> you're really nervous you're just clicking away oh i wish you'd turn off those fucking notifications okay no, listen right as now. as listen, expected can you, uh, listen no. i'm not going to give you a hollow hypothetical i gotta lay the groundwork so you know how to respond in right. full context all right in i'm full just context awareness i'm just gonna say this and we can move on listen we're we're dealing with a little growing pains here okay we're new to this this is episode four uh i like i like you building up to in painting the picture you just got to do it quicker all right that's all i have to say about that okay uh what would i say i'd be like dude what's the fucking problem with the napkin what did it do to you <laughs> whoa whoa you angry at well, all you're napkins a you're a woman though i mean that's oh, a pretty deep voice for a woman if you ask me uh sorry mr gyllenhaal uh shake what's your fucking problem just call me just call me jake you can just call me Jake. What's it? I'm not doing a lady voice. My voice is so resonant that you have it's... a very nice voice. I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. I have to say. Thanks. Your forearms and your voice are very nice. Yeah, I've got great calves too. I don't know about that. I didn't I see those. Oh no. Well, I'll I'll let you know that they're great. I convinced a girl once that I had calf implants. I did. I said we were walking into Publix. We got out of the car and. Uh, hold on, hold on. I, I'm sorry. I'm sure this is a very funny anecdote. It would have been, sure but again, is... what? You want to talk more about the napkin tearing? <laughs> you didn't answer my question. Yes, I did. I said, I, I'd ask you, what the fuck did that napkin do to you? I'm out. You would say that all aggressive and shit? Come on. No, I'd be like, it would be a noted, a small, maybe an orange flag, not a red flag, but I would be like, all right, something's up. He's, maybe it's nerves. I understand that. Hold on. Let me rub my nipple because now I got titties. Oh, Okay. Yeah. That seems like a pretty... That rubbing your nipples thing seems Very. like something someone who has had titties for a long time would do instinctually. It's not something that you would do specifically for this hypothetical situation. No, well, I'm, I playing want, I'm playing a woman. I'm playing a woman. Okay, what were you going to... You were at Publix? What I was happened? At, I was at I Publix. I hope I deflated all the comic timing out of this. You're, you're, you're getting really good at that. It's like it's like a skill that's just blossoming organically, and uh, it's, it's it's beautiful to curve. watch. It is a, a learning curve. It is a learning curve. Uh, so we're getting out of the car, and I was wearing shorts, and she's like, "My God, your calves are amazing!" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, thank you." You know, I mean, it's been a long, hard haul with these calves. I said I had I had some muscle deterioration as a young boy, and I was playing baseball and then I couldn't play baseball anymore because my calves had deteriorated so my family mortgaged their house they they paid for calf implants so these actually aren't even the real calves I was born with these are um, implanted and she absolutely believed it 100% oh my god yeah and I was like, I'm just fucking with you, girl. This is God given. God given. Then she slapped you across the face. No, she she smacked me in my dick. She she was a dick she's smacker. a dick smacker. Yeah, she's a dick smacker. That's a callback. That's a callback. Um, yeah, that story wasn't as good as 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 your 12 hour uh, description of a date for a question that pretty much we already hit upon in the first five minutes of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that was an elaborate callback. It wasn't a callback. It just happened to be there because I roll I organically and I um I'm I'm well versed and trained in improvisation. Okay, well now see we run out of time now. The essay, your essay to the violinist who ghosted you was on the agenda, but you hijacked the podcast once again with a scenario with uh, no real significant payoff. Imran, Imran 
Jeez, man. You just disappeared? Hello? All right. Well, you know what? I'm calling it. That's the podcast for today, folks. Uh, thank you. Please rate, review, and subscribe. Share. We're trying to boost our numbers up. It'll take you a quick second. We prefer iTunes and Google Play. If you, you know, uh, feel the need, uh, we would appreciate it. It'll help us with our numbers as we move forward here with the podcast. All right. Imran would, would say something snarky here and probably make fun of me um, in a number of arenas, but uh, he can't, so F him. Bye. We'll see you. Later, bitches. This is a production of Greg Wiener Productions, Inc. and Hollow Spirit Studios. Go to their website, hollowspiritstudios.com. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share. And to reach out to Greg Wiener or Imran Shake, feel free to message us at The Wiener Shake Show on our Facebook page. Or call 302-RAW-DONG. That's 302-729-3664. Thank you again for listening to The Wiener Shake Show. I'm Oprah Wiener.